Hi everyone and welcome to the Lemon Tree Library. Today we're going to read Wombat Stew. If you have the book, you can follow along with me. I'll let you know when to turn the page because you'll hear this sound. If you don't have the book, that's okay because I have all the words and pictures right here. Shall we begin? Wombat Stew by Marsha K. Vaughan and Pamela Lops. Wombat Stew by Marsha K. Vaughan and Pamela Lops. One day, on the banks of a billabong, a very clever dingo caught a wombat and decided to make wombat stew, wombat stew, gooey, brewy, yummy, chewy wombat stew. Platypus came ambling up the bank. Good day, dingo, he said, snapping his bill. What is all that water for? I'm brewing up a gooey, chewy stew with that fat wombat, replied dingo with a toothy grin. If you ask me, said Platypus, the best thing for gooey stew is mud. Big blops of billabong mud. Blops of mud, Dingo laughed. What a good idea. Rightio, in they go. So Platypus scooped up big blops of mud with his tail and tipped them into the billy can. Around the bubbling billy, Dingo danced and sang. Wombat stew, wombat stew, gooey, brewy, yummy, chewy, wombat stew. Waltzing about from the shade of the ironbarks came Emu. She arched her graceful neck over the brew. Oh, oh, Dingo, she fluttered. What have we here? Gooey, chewy wombat stew, boasted Dingo. If only it were a bit more chewy, she sighed. But don't worry, a few feathers will set it right. Feathers, Dingo smiled. That would be chewy. Rightio, in they go. So into the gooey brew, Emu dropped her finest feathers. Around and around the bubbling billy, Dingo danced and sang. Wombat stew, wombat stew, crunchy munchy for my lunchy, wombat stew. Old Blue Tongue the lizard came sliding off his sun-soaked stone. Silly Dingo, he hissed, there are no flies in that stew. Can't be wombat stew without crunchy flies in it. And he stuck out his bright blue tongue. There's a lot to be said for flies, agreed Dingo, rubbing his paws together. Radio, in they go. So Lizard snapped 100 flies from the air with his long tongue and slipped them into the gooey, chewy stew. Around and around and around the bubbling billy, Dingo danced and sang. Wombat stew, wombat stew, crunchy munchy for my lunchy, wombat stew. Up through the red dust popped a kidna. Wait a bit, not so fast, he bristled, shaking the red dusk from his quills. Now, I've been listening to all this advice, and take it from me, for a munchy stew, you need slugs and bugs and creepy crawlies. Dingo wagged his tail. Why, I should have thought of that. Rightio, in they go. So Echidna dug up all sorts of creepy crawlies and dropped them into the gooey, chewy, crunchy stew. The very clever dingo stirred and stirred, all the while singing, Wombat stew, wombat stew, hot and spicy, also nicey, wombat stew. Just then the sleepy-eyed koala climbed down the scribbly gum tree. Look here, he yawned, any bush cook knows you can't make a spicy stew without gum nuts. Leave it to koala to think of gum nuts, dingo laughed and licked his whiskers. Rightio, in they go. And into the gooey, chewy, crunchy, munchy stew, koala shook lots and lots of gum nuts. Aha, cried Dingo. Now my stew is missing only one thing. What's that? asked the animals. The fat wombat. Wait, stop. Hang on, Dingo. You can't put that wombat into the stew yet. Why not? You haven't tasted it. Rightio, I'll taste it. And that very clever dingo bent over the billy and took a great big slurp of stew. Oh, I'm poisoned, he howled. You've all tricked me. And he dashed away deep into the bush, never again to sing, Wombat stew, wombat stew, gooey, brewy, yummy, chewy, wombat stew. The end. 
Wombat was very lucky to have a lovely group of friends to help him out on that occasion, wasn't he? Maybe next time you're out in the yard, you and your friends can pretend to make a wombat stew. You can put mud and leaves and gum nuts in it. But don't eat it. It'll taste yucky and it might make you sick. While you're thinking about making your own wombat stew, I'm going to go find another book to read. And I'll see you next time at the Lemon Tree Library. Bye-bye.